Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is get input key time down. Let's run through our example, and when I hold down my key, my progress bar goes up and my timer goes up, and it's going to stop at two because that's what I've told it to do. When I let go, it goes back to zero. When I hold it down, it'll repeat. Let's take a look at the node itself. This node will take in a player controller and a key and output a float. And that float will be how long this key has been held down, or zero if it is not being held down, or zero if it's the current frame it was being held down. And let's go ahead and hook this up. I'm taking in a player controller. I'm taking in a key. I can either set it up or use a variable. In this case, it's a variable for H. And I'm outputting this into a progress bar and into a clamp so that way at least it looks pretty. Now I'm running this on a tick and like I said earlier, this gets how long the key has been down. You still need to get it somehow and because I'm doing this on a tick, every frame that's going to check and see how long it's been down for and then process it. That's why when we do this, we'll see it goes up. When I let go of it, again, every frame it's checking, the key is not down so therefore the value is zero. Now one thing you can do with this is we can use things like our just pressed events and just released events and actually start tracking the values and maybe do something with it. So that is something to keep in mind. So what I'm doing here is I am checking to see if the key was just pressed. If it is, I'm opening the gate. I'm going to check and see if it was released. If so, I'm closing the gate. And if not, I'm just going to go ahead and do what we did before. What this lets me do is, you'll notice it starts off with nothing. I hold down H, it goes up, and when I let go, it now stops. I hold down H, and it resets. And this is basically preventing my tick from running every frame and updating the input key down by simply gating it off, checking to see if it's pressed or released, and continuing on. Now that's important to note. I am checking to see if the key was pressed or released. This node doesn't have an event set up to know if it was just pressed or released, so you will have to track it. Something important to note here, this uses the player controller for the input. This goes through the player controller, gets the input key that we want, and gives us the value. If you don't have input going to the player controller, you will not be able to get a value from this. Now what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at our map. Right now I have it set up for my UI to do game and UI. It's so I'm getting input from the player controller or the game, and I'm getting input through the UI or the UMG. Now I'm going to set up to only go through the UI. We'll go ahead and run this again, and I'll hold down the key, and it would help if I actually set this one up properly. So let's try that one again. So player input key time down, sorry about that, and we'll play it again, we'll hold it down, and nothing's happening. The player controller does not get the input when it goes through the UI. The UMG or your whatever you have set up for UI gets the input. So this node, which is saying, hey, player controller, can I get the input for this key and get some information from it? It has nothing. So that's important to keep in mind. This node is not going to work if your input does not go through your player controller. So you need to make sure it's going through the game at some point or your player controller is handling that input in order to get our values to work. And that's it. That's going to wrap up our get input key time down node. It's useful if you want one simple node to track key input for how long it's been down for rather than just checking every frame yourself, this node tells you how long the key has been down for.